Welcome to the Custom Stable training course. The Custom Stable is a revolutionary scleral lens that's incredibly comfortable to wear and easy to fit while offering excellent visual acuity. In this video, we'll learn about the characteristics of the Custom Stable, its indications, and how to fit this amazing lens. Let's get started. The Custom Stable is a scleral lens design. Scleral lenses, unlike traditional corneal GP lenses, vault over the cornea and bear their weight on the cornea and or sclera. The Custom Stable is available in 14.8, 15.8, 16.8, 8, and 17.8 millimeter sizes and can be ordered with a standard spherical back surface or upgraded to our very popular Custom Stable Elite, which has a toric landing zone that customizes the lens to a toric sclera. The Custom Stable lens has three sections called zones that give it its unique functionality and match up with unique areas of the eye. These include the central visual zone, the limbal clearance zone, and the scleral landing zone. The central visual zone is the portion of the lens that vaults the cornea. The central visual zone is designed to clear the central cornea by 150 to 250 microns after settling. The limbal clearance zone is a powerful reverse curve zone that is designed for consistent limbal clearance and has a dramatic effect on the fit of the custom stable. This zone should have 50 to 100 microns of limbal clearance after settling. The outermost zone is the scleral landing zone. The scleral landing zone is larger as the diameter of the custom stable lens increases. The scleral landing zone is designed to align with the conjunctiva and sclera and is the zone that most affects comfort and wear time by promoting a healthy, comfortable landing zone. The custom stable has a very easy modification system. By indicating flatter or steeper steps, you can alter both the limbal clearance zone and the scleral landing zone to get the perfect fit. When modifying the limbal clearance zone, a flatter change reduces limbal clearance, thus reducing sagittal height and overall clearance by 100 microns per step. Conversely, a steeper change increases the limbal clearance, thus increasing sagittal height and overall clearance by 100 microns per step. The scleral landing zone has similar modification properties as the limbal clearance zone. A flatter change opens up the scleral landing zone, promoting scleral alignment and reducing blanching. Conversely, a steeper change tightens the scleral landing zone. A steeper scleral landing zone will control excessive movement of the lens and stop tear exchange. In the custom stable elite system, independent changes can be made to the scleral landing zone's independent meridians. While the flattening and steepening changes to the scleral landing zone do affect the overall sagittal height of the lens, these changes often make minimal difference to overall clearance due to the fact that this zone is outside the tear chamber. There are multiple indications for the custom stable lens, including irregular corneas, such as keratoconus of all forms, pellucid marginal degeneration, terians, and post-trauma. These conditions present a need to vault the cornea. Regular and irregular astigmatism, when glasses and soft lenses just don't provide adequate vision. The rehabilitation and visual acuity of many different forms of ocular surgery, including corneal transplants and refractive surgery of any kind, including, but not limited to, LASIK and radial keratotomy. Ocular surface disease, where the custom stable lens and the tear reservoir it creates, form a protective barrier, which minimizes the production of inflammatory mediators and improves as wear time increases. Severe surface diseases, such as graft versus host, Sjogren syndrome, keratitis, symblepharin formation, and cicatricial pemphigoid. Before we look at our fitting methods, let's go over how to apply and remove the custom stable lens. Applying the custom stable is a straightforward and easy process, and the first step is to ensure it's properly prepared. When a custom stable lens is stored dry, be sure to take a bit of time to prepare the surface of the lens to interact with the tears of the patient. It's best to soak the lens prior to use. However, if that is not practical, be sure to take one minute and clean the lens focusing on the front surface. Then rinse all of the solution off of the back surface of the lens with a preservative-free saline. Now that the lens has been properly cleaned, fill the lens with preservative-free saline. Once the lens is filled, dip a fluorescein strip in the saline-filled lens. This will allow you to analyze overall clearance. While holding the lens, you can either use the DMV application tool or utilize your fingers to form a tripod that the lens can rest on. If you utilize a DMV tool, we recommend snipping the end to eliminate suction. Otherwise, just squeeze the DMV tool to release suction once the lens has been placed on the eye. 
Next, have the patient bend over parallel to the floor, touch their chin to their chest, and concentrate on staring at a spot directly below them. At this point, have the patient gently pull their own lower eyelid down while focusing on a consistent straight gaze. The fitter holds the upper eyelid open and applies the lens directly over the cornea. Removing the custom stable is simple. Use the included smaller plunger tool by applying it to the periphery of the lens. Remove the lens by gently pivoting in a slight rocking motion to easily break the suction on the eye. Never pull the lens straight out from the center. This can cause unwanted pressure and suction on the eye. Application and removal by the patient is also very simple. Typically, this is done over a mirror on a countertop, but can be done without. The patient will prepare the lens and fill with saline just as before, and then utilize either a SNP DMV tool or the tripod method to apply the lens. The smaller DMV tool is recommended when removing. Gently adhere the removal tool to the outer edge of the front surface and pivot in a rocking motion. If the lens is slightly suctioned on, irrigate with saline solution. There are two methods for fitting the custom stable lens. The first is to use K-readings to determine sagittal height of the lens. Start with the 15-8 diameter lens. This will be your go-to lens and is a great starting point for most corneas. Next, take the flat keratometry reading and multiply by 100. This will be your starting sagittal height. For example, if your flat K reading is 44.50, your sagittal height would be 4,450 microns, also listed as 4.450 millimeters. Each sag in the 15-8 has a corresponding base curve. This curve will be part of the visual correction of the patient, however, when considering lens selection, it is fairly irrelevant. While we encourage you to start with the 15-8 as it is a great starting point, you may find that another size is more appropriate. If you are utilizing the 14-8 lens, then subtract 400 microns from your calculated sagittal height. If you are using the 16-8 custom stable, then you'll want to add 400 microns to your calculated sagittal height. When using the custom stable elite lenses, remember to use the steep sagittal height. This is labeled with an S in parentheses on the fitting kit label of the elite set. If the highest sagittal depths in the 15.8 series do not clear the limbus or cornea, consider moving to the 16.8 series. Now that you've calculated a starting sagittal height, go ahead and apply the lens. With the lens now applied, you'll want to check clearance. Initially, we want to achieve 250 to 350 microns of clearance centrally and 100 microns over the limbus. These values will allow the lens to eventually settle approximately 100 microns and achieve a final central clearance of 150 to 250 microns. One millimeter of movement on initial application is okay. However, as the lens settles, you will see virtually no movement. The custom stable lens has no tear exchange, as the saline and tear chamber hold moisture and tears against the cornea continuously, thus reducing symptoms of dryness to the cornea. If your first lens does not achieve these goals, try the next lens in the set that will move you in the right direction. It should only take one or two tries. Use the optic section on the slit lamp to compare the thickness of the fluorescein with the thickness of the lens. Custom Stable and Custom Stable Elite diagnostic lenses are both 400 microns thick. A helpful hint is to swap the front of the Custom Stable lens with a fluorescein strip. This technique will help to illuminate the front surface of the lens for easier evaluation. It's worth mentioning that although your diagnostic lenses are 400 microns thick, prescription Custom Stable lenses are manufactured much thinner to promote oxygen permeability and corneal health throughout wear time. Once the lens has settled, you'll want to examine the lens periphery, looking for any conjunctival blanching and making sure the lens is landing so that it is aligning on the sclera. The second method of fitting the custom stable lens is to use sagittal height when using a full view OCT image. To begin, determine your sagittal height at a cord length that matches the diameter you are using. When using the 15.8, use a cord length of 15.8 and simply add 400 microns to determine your starting lens. For example, if the height of the cornea at a 15.8 cord length is 4,000 microns, start with the 4,400 sag height custom stable lens or the closest available in the set. When using OCT, there's no need for fluorescein unless for a quick look with your blue light. Now is the time to apply the lens and check your apical and limbal clearances. As in the K-readings to sagittal height conversion method, initially we want to achieve 250 to 350 microns of clearance centrally and 100 microns over the limbus. These values will allow the lens to eventually settle approximately 100 microns and achieve a final central clearance of 150 to 250 microns. 
The final step is to allow the lens to settle 20 to 30 minutes and to then check to ensure the lens is landing on the sclera and that there is no conjunctival blanching. With the OCT, use the 50-50 principle to determine an appropriate landing zone. The landing zone should settle with 50% of the lens edge resting in the conjunctiva. Once the lens is applied, take the time to check the periphery. First, look for any conjunctival blanching. If you notice areas of impingement, it means your lens is not landing optimally and you'll want to make modifications. You can use your blue light for a quick bearing and bubble check. A dark central area indicates central touch. Next, look for a faint black ring in the fluorescein of the limbal area, which would indicate limbal touch. Very mild superior limbal touch is normal and usually caused by upper eyelid pressure. Also check that the lens is landing on the sclera and centering correctly. The custom stable will tend to center slightly inferior temporal. This is acceptable. If the lenses are dropping excessively, consider lowering sagittal depth using a one-step flatter limbal clearance zone or going to the custom stable elite lens. Once you've examined the lens on eye, remove it and again check the eye post-removal, paying close attention to corneal staining and conjunctival hyperemia. Some conjunctival hyperemia is acceptable. Attempt to get the patient to successful line of vision without the use of refractive cylinder. The tier lens of the custom stable lenses are designed to perfect the cornea, often achieving great vision with a symmetrical, rotational-free visual field. However, the custom stable line of lenses are all available with a front toric, dual slap-off option that provides the patients with comfort and heightened visual acuity if necessary. In addition, when a spherical refraction does not yield the best visual acuity, the custom stable elite can be made into a front surface toric as well. We do this without the use of weighting, using only the toric back surface for cylinder orientation. This promotes a thinner lens and optimal corneal health. When the lens is settled, it is very important to note where the meridian marks are relative to the 0180 meridian of the cornea. The meridian marks are lasered on the flat base meridian of the Custom Stable Elite. A standard Custom Stable Elite lens looks like figure one. This is how the lens would position if the flat meridian was on the 0180 meridian of the cornea. It is important to note whether the Custom Stable Elite lens is rotated relative to the 0180 meridian of the cornea when the patient needs cylinder correction. If the lens is rotated clockwise or left, relative to the 0180 meridian of the cornea, use the Lars method. Left add, right subtract, to modify the axis and the over refraction accordingly. As an example, if the lens is rotated left 30 degrees, add 30 to the axis of the cylinder, i.e. an over refraction of minus one, minus 125 at 75. You would then order minus one, minus 125 at 105 so that when the new lens rotates 30 degrees left, the patient will have the desired axis of 75. If the custom stable elite is rotated counterclockwise or right, relative to the 0180 meridian of the cornea, i.e. an over refraction of minus one, minus 125 at 75, you would then order minus one, minus 125 at 45, so that when the new lens rotates 30 degrees right, the patient will have the desired axis of 75. When front cylinder is ordered on the custom stable, dynamic rotation double check marks will be lasered on the lens. These vertical hash marks will be on the 9270 meridian of the cornea when the rotation is accurately described and consistent. There are a few common challenges when fitting the custom stable lens. The first being lens surface and tear interaction. The most common cause of this is a lack of preparation on the surface of the custom stable. Cosmetics and lipids on the eyelids can be a factor as well. To avoid this issue, be sure to prepare the lens well with solution and use a lid scrub on the patient if necessary. In addition, custom stable lenses can be ordered with tangible hydropeg, a breakthrough lens coating that increases surface water retention and the feeling of lubricity and smoothness, while also minimizing deposits and lens fogging. Another complication can occur when the lens is riding slightly low. The custom stable lens is made with an advanced reverse curve for limbal clearance purposes. If the clearance is too high over the limbus or centrally, it can cause the lens to ride low. Reducing the overall central clearance or the limbal clearance can help this. Fitting the more customizable custom stable elite can also help to center the lens as it is much more adept at centering on toric scleras. 
Conjunctival blanching is yet another common issue. This occurs when the scleral landing zone is not aligned with the conjunctiva. To resolve this issue, the scleral landing zone step system allows the fitter to customize the landing zone to the patient's needs. A flattening change opens the scleral landing zone away from the sclera. Flattening the limbal clearance zone will help with blanching as well, as it relaxes the reverse curve, reducing pressure on the conjunctiva. For blanching that occurs bilaterally on one meridian of the conjunctiva, the Custom Stable Elite is the best fix. The final and much talked about challenge is the injection of corneal and conjunctival goblet cells and tear debris into the saline bowl of the well-fit Custom Stable lens. This is widely considered to be a problem that results from tear exchange. It is important that the Custom Stable lens forms a tear chamber that does not allow exchange inside or out. To test for this, perform the fluorescein exchange test by placing fluorescein on the front of the custom stable and watching to see if it infiltrates behind the lens, thus exchanging sides. If this is the case, you'll notice that the fluorescein usually comes in from the top of the lens. The custom stable elite is the best way to address this issue, as the steeper scleral landing zone on one meridian seals the cornea, keeping unwanted infiltrates out. If the fluorescein exchange test shows no tear exchange, attempt to use a more viscous, preservative-free application solution to impede the infiltration of cells. The last option is to simply have the patient remove and refill the lens midday with fresh, preservative-free application solution. You should note that this condition can settle down after a few weeks of normal wear. Thank you for watching the Custom Stable training video. As you begin to fit the Custom Stable, your fitting skills will rapidly improve as you learn to quickly diagnose, modify, and achieve successful fits. Like many other practitioners, we're sure the Custom Stable will become a very important component of your problem-solving toolkit.